Hey everyone and welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown. I just want to give a quick update on some news that we sort of released earlier on this week and I just wanted to give you some more clarification. So earlier on this week I had an interview with the Christian Heritage, Le Christian Heritage Party's leader, uh, Rod Taylor, and in that interview he made some claims about COVID-19. Now, we update, uh, uploaded that interview to YouTube, as we usually do with all of our interviews. And YouTube took it down within hours of uh, us putting it up there. So we uploaded it uh, that night. So this is Monday night for it to be airing on Tuesday. Um, Tuesday about midnight, we got notif notified by email that the episode would be removed from YouTube because it went against their covid 19 standards now we we on our show have gone on and said that we will never edit interviews we do not want to take anyone out of context and we do not want to uh make people assume something that the guest did not say now in doing so, in doing that, in sticking to our standards and practices of not editing interviews, we uploaded that interview to SoundCloud, which uploaded it to Spotify, Apple Podcast, all the platforms that you're listening to this on now, and YouTube. YouTube was the one that took it down. Now, we, we have nothing against YouTube, and YouTube has the right to do with what they want. We wanted to release that episode under the assumption that this is what this party believes. I do not hold the key to what people believe. I have people on my show from all different backgrounds, all different parties, and I I rely on you, the, the listeners, to understand where we are as a show. I'm not here to tell you what to believe. Believe what you want to believe. Think what you want to think. I'm not here to judge you. You shouldn't judge me. I'm not going to judge you. By having this episode released, we were doing the same thing we would have done with Rachel Notley, Jason Kenney, Jeff Davison, Councillor Penner, Councillor Meehan, members of Parliament. We do not edit them because we do not want to take someone out of context. We uploaded this episode to YouTube under the assumption that the people have the right to hear from our political leaders, whether they be elected or not. They have the right to hear from the people who are saying things. Now, I am not the mainstream media, and I do not pretend that I am. So I know that our show is a fraction of what CBC, CTV, Global, other shows get. But what we do differently is we invite everyone on. Because I do not want to be accused of saying something or doing something that is against someone else. Everyone has the right to their own opinion. Everyone has the right to their own beliefs. I believe, and I believe almost everyone does, that we do live in a world where society dictates what's right and wrong. Now, you might not believe what right and wrong is, but I'm not here to tell you that you're completely up creek without a paddle. I'm here to have a conversation with you. We always try to tell ourselves that we need to listen to the other side. We need to understand where the other side is coming from. And that's what I do on this show. I try to understand where the other side is coming from. Now, has that gotten me into trouble? Yes. Have people sent me hate mail? Yes. But why not? Why can't we have a conversation between two people? I, I, I find it so hard to believe that in today's age, we can't have a conversation with people. I've been on other people's shows. I've had guests on the show that I do not agree with 100%. But why can't I have a conversation with them? Why can't I un just talk to them like I am to you right now? We, we were going to do this whole long episode about the Ontario election and where the parties stand, what was going on, but we had our guests back out at the last minute due to scheduling conflicts. I completely get that. 
So I wanted to just clear up some information about the show because I find that there's a little bit of misinformation about how we choose our guests and how we have people on the show. So just sit back, just enjoy the next few minutes of the show because I, I truly believe that while this is a one-off episode where I'm actually going to talk about myself and talk about the show, I want to make sure people understand where the show is coming from and where the show is going into the future because we do have a lot of things that are going to be changing in the next few months and I just want to make sure people know what is in store for us. So stick tuned. We're going to go to a quick commercial break and we'll be right back and we'll just talk about what's going on and how the show has evolved from where it started in 2019 to where it is now in 2022. So we'll be right back. Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit CalgaryCaesarFest.com and get your tickets today. So I just want to continue on with what I was saying before the commercial break there. And that is, I would love, love, love to have a conversation with anyone. I, I, I've enjoyed it since I was a journalist back in 630 News in Belleville, Ontario. Whether it be the weekend anchor at Starboard Communications in Belleville, Ontario. Whether it be during my time at the Ontario uh, Legislature, Queen's Park. Or whether it be at the Orno Weekly Times in Orno, Ontario. My old stomping ground, Lloydminster, Alberta. I enjoyed talking to people one-on-one -on -one in an intimate setting. No, no, no holds barred, just an honest conversation between two people. Whether you agree with them or not, I just enjoyed doing that. Now... Since the rise of social media and Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Ticket to Talk, I, I, I found more and more people were getting that one-on-one -on -one communication leaving. I just I found that people were not having that one-on-one -on -one conversation anymore. And I always prided myself on having that one-on-one -on -one communication because I find that I grow as a person. I, I learn things, I learn other perspectives, and I just enjoy having that intimate conversation with somebody, no matter who it was, no matter what subject it was on. I enjoyed it. So that's where the show came from. In 2019, I started it. I, I did not expect a lot of people to listen. And if you saw the 2019 first season numbers, you'd know not a lot of people listened to the show. It wasn't until uh, the end of season one in 2020 in June when we started bringing on the leadership candidates for the Green Party of Canada, uh, including the then uh, candidate Anime Paul, now interim leader uh, Mita Kuttner onto the show. We had them and people started tuning in. And I was shocked, actually, honestly shocked about people tuning into the show because I just didn't expect it and I didn't expect people would want to have a conversation. But we saw the rise of Dak Shepard's armchair expert, the Joe Rogan experience with Joe Rogan, love him, hate him. You saw people wanting to have that conversation and I wanted to listen to have listen to people have conversations as well. That still shocks me, but here we are. I, I, I digest because we we wanted to set this show under the assumption that anyone has a story. Everyone has a story, I should say. And everyone has the right to tell their story. Whether you agree with them or not, people have the right to their opinion. It might be the wrong opinion. It might be a complete whack job, but they have the right to their opinion. And we used to understand that. We used to understand that people had the right to their own opinion. And whether it be freedom of speech, freedom of expression, we had the rights to hold what we believed to ourselves truthfully. And I, I want to say our show has always prided ourselves on that. Hence why, like I said at the introduction, we do not edit the show at all. We do not do it. 
because there is the assumption that if you edit something, you are taking someone's words out of context. And as a former journalist, I know that to be true. I know that you take things and you cut them down from a five minute diatribe into a 15 second soundbite, you were going to take that person out of context. And we saw the rise of that on social media. You have to remember social media is 140, 280 characters and that's it. So it is easy to take things out of context. Texting, if you do not inflect in your speech on the text, it can be taken out of context, whether it be someone being joyful and being taken out of context, being angry, it can happen. So I wanted to get away from that and I wanted to just have a conversation between two people, three people, four people, as many people wanted to come on the show. And I found I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having that conversation. I learned things from people that I didn't expect. I've had conservatives, I've had liberals, I've had NDPs, I've had entertainers, I've had musicians, I've had religious, uh, uh, prominent religious leaders in, our, in Canada on the show. And each time I had that conversation, I learned something about myself and I learned something about a different opinion that I had never thought about before. Now, I will say I do not agree with all the statements that have been said on the show from my guests, but I don't have the ability to stop that because this, if, if I have the right to my opinion, my beliefs, my truths, then I should not hold that against somebody else. And I find that there are people in this world who do that. And I don't want to be accused of being that person. And I have been recently in the last few weeks. You have the right to believe what you believe. I have the right to believe what I believe. What stops us from having a conversation is talking about those beliefs. We, we, we always want to learn. We always want to grow. We always want to be better. But if we don't communicate with people and we don't understand the other side, then how can we truly heal a nation, come together, and build on what we have? And I, I, I know, again, my show's rinky-dinky compared to other shows, but I'm so happy that I'm able to be a little bit, a little bit of the political discourse and the discourse of our society. I, I've been called a faggot. I've been called a liberal retard. I've been called a wash up. I've been called someone who's been riding his husband's coattails since I started the show. And it angers me. It angers me that people are able to use that vile language when talking to somebody else. Now, I know for those who, have, who will say, well, you've said nasty things in your past as well. I, I get that. I, I'm not here to say you don't have the right to spew whatever you want. I'm saying don't listen to the show. I, I, we, we, we are a show that has prided ourselves on talking to anyone and everyone. And that's because we, we have the right to. I was asked recently in an interview with the Forgotten Corner podcast, is there anyone I wouldn't have on the show? And yeah, there is. There's one type of person that I would not have on this show. And that's someone who's a, uh, sexually assaulted a child or someone who has killed somebody. I, I don't want to give a platform to that to on my show. And I have the right to say that. Are there certain people that I don't want to have on the show? Yeah. Are there certain people I've reached out to who I don't want to have on the show because they've said no to me and now they want to be on the show? Yeah. But that's my prerogative. That's my prerogative to have who I want on the show. And I try not to restrict who I have on the show because I don't want to be accused of being favorites to the liberals or the NDPs or the conservatives or the People's Party or the Mavericks or the Greens or the Ontario First Party or whatever. I want to have a conversation with people. And while the last few months since the start of season three and the rebrand of the show here in January 
we have seen our numbers skyrocket. I am shocked about how many people are willing to tune in and listen to me blab on a bit with a guest or two. And I'm so happy that people are joining us for this, uh, this journey. And I, I thank you. I thank you for wanting to learn about somebody different and somebody new. During the municipal election, I, I often heard from numerous candidates that I had on the show, thank you for giving us a platform. Because the mainstream media wasn't giving us that platform. And I, I understand why. Because they have such a short window that they try to get as much information as possible out there. And sometimes candidates get left on the way scale. I don't want to do that. We have a show. We have an hour, two hours, three hours. We have five days a week, seven days a week, as, we, as we're a five-day-a-week show. But we have the ability to have a conversation with people. And it's kind of free advertising for them because they come on the show, they can sh share this, and they can let their followers know or their, uh, their residents of their constituents know. This is what I believe because the mainstream media, the legacy media, isn't giving them the time of day. Well, someone's got to, and I'm going to be that person. I'm not trying to uh, toot my own horn here, but I'm going to be that person who gives people the platform that they need to get their message out. Agree with them, disagree with them, whatever you want. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to enjoy doing it because I want to learn from the people who are on my show. And I want to be able to say, I, I had this person on because I believe they have the right to be a party. They have the right to be a uh uh, uh, uh the, to have their opinions heard if you don't want to listen to that episode don't listen to that episode if you don't want to hear from them don't hear from them it's not it, it doesn't hurt me it just hurts our discourse in the 90s and 80s the 80s and 90s we we we, we had the four major parties the greens the ndp the pcs and the liberals federally during that time, the Green Party was not talked about on the mainstream media. They were not, like CBC barely covered them. Can you name a Green Party leader? Probably a few people can. I can't. I can remember Jim Harris, Elizabeth May, Annamie Paul, Anita Kuttner. Those are the four that I can name off the top of my head. Now, it might be because that's when I started covering politics and I started paying attention to politics. But now look at them. They're a mainstream party. They are a party with representatives in the House of Commons. I, 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 I don't, I, I'm not a betting man, and I would not say this to get a rise out of anyone. But you have to remember, if people cover all the parties the same way, then you might get different opinions heard in the House of Commons. It's a weird concept. So I'm going to cover parties that some people don't want to cover. And it's their prerogative not to cover them. I'm going to cover the Independence Party of Alberta. I'm going to cover the Christian Heritage Party. Do I believe fully with what they say? No. But why, why, do, why, why, won't, why would that stop me from having a conversation with them and just hearing them out? Doesn't mean that I'm going to go vote for them tomorrow, but I'm still going to say I'd love to have a conversation with you because I think we need to have a conversation and I think that we people need to understand where people are coming from. If CBC, CTV, Global, all these different news organizations don't give these people platforms, then someone needs to. And I don't, again, don't want to toot my own horn, but I will be that person that gets on the platform. Now, by saying this, I, I know there's going to be angry people of saying, well, you're giving uh, right-wing people uh, a platform to spew their hate. Twitter does that. Facebook does that. <laughs> doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem like you're getting off those programs quite quickly. YouTube does that. What, what is the issue? Just because you know me, you can attack me, you can call me names, you can send hate mail to me, go for it. I, I, I try to be uh, generous with the time that I give to each party, to the uh, organizations that I give. I try to shine spotlights on our community organizations here in, Can in Calgary because I believe we need to. And I believe that sometimes social media can distort the truth. 
and may not get out the information as much as you want them to. So I'm going to change that. So when we come back from this last break, I'm going to talk about what the future holds for the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, because we have a few things that we're going to be doing here, and I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to bringing you some new things in the next few months. And just stay with us, and we'll be talking about them soon, okay? Talk to you soon. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15-second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross-border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. Now, you might have been noticing that the crossword interviews with Chris Brown has been releasing some news articles over the last few weeks and months. And we, we want to uh, start doing that a little bit more uh, because we want to get back into the journalism game. I, I miss it. I do enjoy it. And we're trying to get back into it. Now, over the last few months, due to the surgery that we had in December, I have been sort of stuck in my bubble of my house and that's changing uh earlier this week i was reinstated to start driving so i'm looking forward to getting back out there between dusk and dawn uh and covering some of the events that are happening here and around calgary and alberta uh our first big trip is up to fort mcmurray lac la biche to be on the ground in uh the by-election so we're going to be covering that we might be going up there this weekend we're not 100 percent sure we're just waiting for a uh, final approval from the doctor to give us the a-okay and we will be on the road up to fort mcmurray <coughs> there we will be covering things live uh via facebook via twitter via instagram so please tune in subscribe to those channels because we will be doing that more often the other thing I want to talk about is our show uh, is going on the road. We talked about that earlier this uh, in January, but I want to give you a little bit more details. So starting in May, we are going to be hitting 316 municipalities here in the province of Alberta. Now, you might say, what do you mean you're hitting 316 municipalities in the province of Alberta? Well, that's a great question. I'll be happy to answer it for you. 316, uh, uh, 316 uh, municipalities have Reeves, mayors, and First Nations here in the province of Alberta. And we are setting out, and it is a giant task, but we are up to a, a challenge, if we've ever seen one. We are setting out to interview in their own council chambers every single Reeve, mayor, First Nations chief in the province of Alberta in their community. With the restrictions now lifted as of March 1st, we are pleased and honored to be back on the road and getting out there, exploring this great community and telling the stories of the smaller communities that don't often get told. Now, I talked about, or I talked about in the second, in the middle segment, uh, before I started, before our last commercial break, about those candidates that came up to us and said, uh, thank you for covering us because we don't often get coverage. There's municipalities out there just like that. There's a lot of municipalities out there right now who are saying to themselves, how do we get noticed? How do we get uh, our story told? And I'm going to do that. I'm going to go out, hit the road with my producer on side and potentially a camera person if we can raise enough funds, which we're slowly raising. Links to, the, to donate to the show are in the show notes, so highly recommend that you do that. Um, and we are going to these communities and talking to their elected leaders themselves. We're gonna showcase who their community is, what gems are in their communities, and here's the best part. We're gonna have a conversation about the people in this province with them. Alberta's a great province. I, I don't think anyone would disagree with me with on that. What, you may disagree politically with the leadership, but at the end of the day, we live in a god dang great province we live in a great country too and i am so happy that we live in a free world where i can go ask a mayor for an interview 
and have them sit down and ask questions about their municipality. We have lots of municipalities already lined up and we're looking forward to hitting that in May. Now, you might be asking why you're talking about this if you're doing it in May. We need funding. And this is my shameless plug to ask for donations to the show. Now, like I said, in the show notes, there's the crossboardinterviews.ca backslash support where you can support the show and you can give to help us expand this show so we can cover all 316 municipalities. This isn't going to be a summer thing. This is going to be an ongoing new segment on the show where once we start recording them in September, we will be releasing a single episode each Saturday, each Friday, sorry, each Friday until all 316 municipalities, First Nations, municipal districts, summer villages, cities, towns are released. This is a lot to accomplish, but I'm, I'm up to the challenge. And I'm looking forward to seeing and discovering the hidden gems that are in this province. Because I find that we often talk about Red Deer, Edmonton, Calgary, Grand Prairie, Fort McMurray, Lethbridge, Medicine Hat. But let's talk about the smaller community. Let's talk about Pincher Creek. Let's talk about Camrose. Let's talk about Butte, Alberta. Let's talk about these cities let's talk about blackie alberta let's talk about slave lake alberta let's talk about them with the mayors the reeves the first nation chiefs and i i hope you do enjoy this new segment of the show that we're going to be releasing and it's going to be called cross border interviews tours alberta when we will be releasing photos as we go about and interview some of these mayors our first one which will be released uh, later in september is St. Albert. So Kathy Heron, the mayor of St. Albert, in our third episode back of 2022, we sat down and she said, come up in May. We'll sit down. We'll have a chat. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to having those conversations again and actually touring this great province of ours. I, I hope you enjoy it as well. So this is one part of the new segment that we're going to be doing. Uh, the other one is the uh, daily news stories that we're going to be doing as well. Uh, most of them are going to have a political slant on them. I'm not going to be honest. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be. I'm going to be honest and not going to lie that these are all going to have a political slant on them because I think, uh, as Mike Duffy said, a senator Mike Duffy who was on a show in December said, uh, everything comes down to politics. Everything comes down to politics, and politics makes the world go round. So I'm looking forward to covering stories again, covering leadership races, and uh, covering the municipalities that need to be covered here in the province of Alberta. The last new segment of the show is uh, the uh, good old fashion leadership races. Now, there is a lot of leadership races that are going to be taking place over the next few months, next few years. And we are, hopefully, knock on wood, going to be going to these leadership races as they unfold. We're going to be taking the show not only on the road here in Alberta, but on the road here in Canada to cover the leadership races in the provinces where the leadership races are taking place. Uh, whether it be the Saskatchewan NDP in June, we will be there. Whether it be the Nova Scotia Liberals and the NDP in uh, June and July, we will be there. Whether it be the upcoming Green federal leadership race, wherever that will be held, we will be there. Maybe it's the conservative leadership race. We will be there. We will be there on the ground covering the stories as they come and as they break because we want to be that news source again. We are looking forward to doing that. We are looking forward to getting out there, covering these stories, and maybe, 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 and this is just a big old maybe here, we will potentially, after the Tour Alberta segment's done, be doing cross-border interviews, Tours Canada, where we will make it an effort to sit down in their ridings of 338, 342, depending on if the seats change, which they expect to, 342 ridings, 338 ridings, sit down with every single member of parliament here in Canada. We are slowly doing that here on the show already. We've had MP Jazz, Jazz Raj Holland, We've had uh, former MPs on the show as well. We had the former member of Parliament for Nunavut, Mumala Kwak Kwak, on the show while she was a sitting MP. And we are looking forward to getting out there and actually sitting down with them. Uh, so 
if you want, please support the show. Please back the show. Please go over to crossboardinterviews.ca, uh, hit the Patreon uh, logo, hit the support logo, and give us some money. Uh, I know that's a very harsh ask, but we can't do this show without you. And we are uh, giving as much money as we possibly can to the show. If you can donate five, ten dollars a month, that'd be greatly appreciated. So, with that, I do want to say uh, thank you so much for letting uh, letting me rant for the last few minutes. I do appreciate everything that everyone's done over the last few months for me. Uh, I look forward to bringing you some great new segments of the show, great new episodes of the show, uh, and I, I truly look forward to what the future has in store for the Crossboard Interviews with Christopher Brown. So, with that, I'm Christopher Brown, the host of the Crossboard Interviews with Christopher Brown. Have yourself an excellent day, and remember, guys, get out from behind that camera, get out from behind that. That microphone uh, get out from behind that uh twitter facebook page and just have a conversation with somebody have a conversation talk to them talk to them like your neighbors talk to them like your brother talk to them like your mother and just have a conversation and stop the name calling i will you will we all will let's do it so everyone here at the crossport interviews podcast interviews with christopher brown i should say because we rebranded have yourself an excellent day and chat to you later